Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be going over my top 10 favorite WCA events. So before I get into this video, make sure to check out my numbers 11 through 18, so my 8 least favorite WCA events. I'll leave a link to it on screen right now and in the description, so make sure to check that out first. Also, if you are unaware, I have made a video like this before, but my opinions have changed a ton since that video. So with that out of the way, let's get into number 10. So my 10th favorite WCA event actually hasn't changed over time, and that event is 3x3 Blindfolded. Since I made my last video, I've gotten a bit faster at 3x3 Blindfolded, and I do find it more fun to practice than I used to, but it's mainly low on the list just because I feel like improving improvement happens really slowly. As is the case with many people, I have a really low success rate when I go for speed, so a lot of times it feels like I'm not improving just because of the large amount of DNFs. It's still a fun event to practice on occasion though, and it's always one of the events I bring up if I need to impress any non-cubers. And at number 9 we have yet another blindfolded event, which is 4x4 blindfolded. 4x4 blindfolded is great, because it combines the speed aspect of 3 blinds with the exhilarating aspect of 5 blinds. It definitely feels like a big blind solve to me, but at the same time, I'm not just going for success like with other big blind events. I'm also going for speed. I'm not super fast or anything, but it feels good to be able to knock out a 4x4 blindfolded solve when I have 10 minutes of spare time and want to challenge my memory a bit. Also, my success rate is pretty high for 4 blinds, mainly because I do spend a decent amount of time on memo, and make sure to review it a couple times so I don't forget. Whenever I do a successful 4 blind solve, I feel like I've accomplished something big, which is a rare feeling for a solve this short compared to other blindfolded events. Next, at number 8, my favorite blindfolded event is 3x3 multi-blind. This event basically solves the problems I have with 3x3 blindfolded, because, like 4 blind, my success rate is higher in multi-blinds than it is in 3 blind, and I'm sure that's because with multi-blind, I'm not really going for a fast time at all, instead the goal is just to do as many cubes as possible. With that goal in mind, I make it a point to spend time reviewing what I've memorized so I don't mess up anywhere. Like 5 blind, multi blind is an extremely satisfying event at the end of the attempt. There's just something about taking off a blindfold and seeing so many solved cubes in front of you that never gets old. At number 7, we have 2x2. Two two. I said it, you happy now? Last time I made this list, 2x2 two two wasn't on it, which prompted dozens and dozens of comments to come flooding in asking me why it wasn't on the list. At the time, I honestly didn't like the event. As a matter of fact, it was one of my least favorite events, but more recently, it's inched its way up my list a bit. If you'd asked me a couple months ago, 2x2 two two would have been one of my least favorite events, but after getting a new main and doing over a thousand solves, I have to admit, and I hate to admit, that it's pretty fun. It hurts me to put it this high on the list, but there's just something about it that pulls me in. I tell myself I'll do 5 solves, and I find myself doing 100. I hate to admit it, but 2x2 two two might not be as bad as I thought. Next, at number 6 on the list, we have 4x4. Four 4x4 four. Four four is a really fun event that's the perfect mixture between a long event and a short event for me. It's not so short that it becomes trivial and luck-based, and it's not so long that it becomes boring. I often find myself bringing a 4x4 with me when I go out somewhere, and it's always one of my go-to puzzles to solve when I need to kill some time. And, one thing that hasn't changed since my last top 10 is how much fun and satisfying 3 2 3 edges are on this thing. It's one of my favorite end by end puzzles for that reason alone. Alright, now we've made it to the top 5, and what better way to kick it off than with 5x5? Five five? This event is one of the few that hasn't changed spots since my last top 10. One of the reasons I really like 5x5 five five is because I use Yao, which is a method that I personally really love. Edge pairing is really fun and satisfying, and the centers are great because they don't take so long like on 6x6 six six and 7x7, seven seven, but they're also not nearly as simple as on 4x4. Four four. Getting good 5x5 five five solves requires really good look ahead, which makes those solves all the more satisfying to get. Every time I get a good 5x5 five five time, I really feel like I've earned it. Plus, ever since I got my hands on the Cube Depot Rocket Wushuang M, I've loved the event even more. Without exaggeration, this is one of my favorite cubes in my collection just because of how much of a pleasure it is to turn. For all those reasons, I have no choice but to keep 5x5 at number 5. At number 4, we have an event that really rose through the ranks since my last list, and that's 3x3 with feet. This remains a very controversial event among the community, but I personally still find it really fun. Although I haven't had a competition with this event in over a year, whenever I do have one coming up, I always practice a lot in the weeks leading up to it, and I'm sure I'll do the same before Nationals this year. For such a weird event, it's surprisingly fun, and I honestly think most people don't like it just because they haven't given it a fair chance. It may sound, look, and feel pretty stupid, but once you put a bit of practice in, it's an event you won't want to stop. Alright, so before I get on to my top 3 favorite events, I just need to say something. So, the reason that I procrastinated so much on making this top 10 video was because I couldn't decide for my life what order to put these 3 events in. I basically considered every combination of these 3 events for the top 3, and they all made equal sense to me in my mind. But in the end, I settled on this order. Number 3 is going to come as a shock to a lot of you. Not because it's so high up, but because it's so low down. And that event is Pyraminx. <gasps> but TG Cubes, you love Pyraminx! It's the best event ever invented and you love it so much, how could you do this? My life is ruined! At least that's what I think you're saying. 
I don't know. I can't really hear you, but that's that's what I'm picturing. But let me explain. First off, this list is my current list, like I said. It's very possible that Pyraminx could reach the top again someday, and it definitely was at the top for a majority of my Cuban career. But the truth is that recently, I haven't been as into Pyraminx as I once was. It's still my best event by far, but that doesn't mean it's my favorite. The last time I put a lot of practice into Pyraminx was over the past summer after I failed to podium at Nationals, and I probably did a couple thousand solves over a week or so. But at that point, I realized that it might be better to not practice so much, so I wouldn't be putting so much pressure on myself to do well in competitions. And since then, I haven't practiced Pyraminx all that much, and I found that this actually does help my nerves in competition a lot. I've done four official averages since I've stopped seriously practicing, and they've all been sub-3, and they're all in my top 5 best official averages ever. Although I still practice Pyraminx sometimes, I found that this doesn't really help my competition results. I do feel that I've approached my limits with Pyraminx, but I'm definitely not done with the event. It's just that for now, it's not my main focus. Before I move on to the next two events though, I would like to talk about why this event got so high on the list in the first place. Its biggest appeals for me are that it's completely intuitive and basically algless, and that it's such a short event. I like being able to knock out a couple hundred solves in a short session, and I really love the idea of fully understanding a puzzle. I've also always felt like Pyraminx is one of the few events where I actually feel like I have some natural talent. That's really not something I find in other events, so it's definitely an uplifting event for me to practice. In general, it's a fun event that's always been there to boost my self-esteem when I need it, and even though it's not currently my favorite, it'll always be near the top of my list. At number 2, we have an event that I've gotten into a lot more recently. Previously, it wasn't even in my top 10, but over the last couple months, I've really grown to love it. And that event is FMC, or the Fewest Moves Challenge. For those of you who don't know, FMC is an event in which the competitor is given a scramble for a cube and has an hour to come up with the most efficient solution. Most people just starting out with FMC will use a speed solving method like CFOP to solve the cube, but this is far from the most fun way to do it, and won't result in nearly as good results. Techniques like block building, NIS, and insertions are really fun to learn and incorporate in myself, and FMC is just such a fun event for me overall. I'm far from an expert, I'm still really slow at insertions and have trouble finding skeletons, but it's so much fun to practice improving these skills and learning more about the event. My favorite thing about FMC is how I feel like I've learned so much about the way the Rubik's Cube works since I've started seriously practicing. Even when I go over the hour time limit and get a DNF, I still feel like I've learned a lot that I can incorporate into future attempts. Overall, FMC is a great event that truly tests my understanding of the cube, which is why it's earned its place at number 2 on my list. And finally, my number 1 favorite WCA event is... 3x3. Three three. Dang, I've gotten boring. Like I said, when I was writing this list, there were three events in the running for first place. Pyraminx, FMC, and 3x3. Three three. Although Pyraminx would have easily taken it for most of my Cuban career, I couldn't put it at number one anymore because of my lack of recent focus on it. As far as FMC goes, I couldn't put it at number one either because it's such a recent development in my Cuban career, so it hasn't exactly proven its worth to me yet. So, by process of elimination, we have our winner, the one that started it all, the 3x3 three three Rubik's Cube. 3x3 three three is like a loyal friend in a way. It's an event that's always been there for me. I've gone through phases of liking basically every WCA event, except Clock, but even during those phases, I've always had a 3x3 three three session on CS Timer slowly going on in the background. Not to mention the many, many weekends where I spent countless hours working on 3x3, three three, going through average of 100 after average of 100. 3x3 three three is truly a great event. It's so much fun to practice and so much fun to see improvement that I couldn't help but put it at number one on my list. So that's my list of my top 10 favorite WCA events. Like I said before, make sure to check out my 8 least favorite WCA events if you haven't already. I'll leave a link in the description below. And make sure to leave your own favorite WCA events in the comments if you so please. But yeah, that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on my next video.